Hey y'all, it's me again, seven time figure Olympia champion Sydney Gillen and we're here to talk about kind of how to build your leg day program and while we're building the leg day program, do's and don'ts of what to do in certain exercises and how you can create more variation in your routine if you are sticking to the same type of workout and the same type of exercises. Again, like you've probably seen in the last video, you can have the same plan for years. That does not mean that you have to use the exact same machines every single time in order to get the same bang for your buck. So for instance, when I'm planning a leg day workout, so for my beginners, this is kind of how you can structure everything. So if I'm doing one leg day a week, again, this is different from people who are doing two leg days a week, three leg days a week. If I'm doing one leg day a week, my goal is to touch the entire leg in that one day. So that means I'm gonna choose three hamstring exercises, and I'm gonna choose three quad exercises, okay? Now with that being said, how do you differentiate that on say a leg press in terms of, okay, I wanna do a leg press, but how do I know it's for quads or how do I know it's for hamstrings? So here, we're gonna go over here. Everybody has a leg press. You may not have a specific one, but you have a leg press variation, okay? When you're thinking about training quads, you're gonna think about keeping your feet about a little bit lower right around here at the bottom to where the knee is forced to cross over the toe a little bit more or be in line with it, okay? When you think about hamstrings, you're gonna think about picking your feet higher and more so digging through the heels, okay? So that's kind of how you can break that down on almost any machine. Um, it's about the distance that you're putting for your feet for your body. Because if you still feel it in a certain place, that means you need to readjust for your body, okay? Because the key thing is, when you're doing your workouts, you don't want to feel pain anywhere. You can feel muscular pain. Sometimes like, oh, I'm pushing myself. But joint pain is a whole other different thing that can cause injuries and hurt you in the long run. So be very, very cautious of what it feels like on your frame and your body type. So you're going to get the most variation from people who have issues like me. If I have one leg that's short or my hip is off or some spinal condition or my extremely tall people where their femur is longer than something else, okay? When that happens, you have to change your form for your body type. All right, so we got here. We got our leg press machine. I'm gonna get in here good, I'm gonna get set, make sure my hips are set. All right, for quads, I'm going to keep my feet low, here and here, okay? Now, foot placement wise, you can go feet together if you so choose. You can go feet neutral, neutral is neutral, okay? You can go feet wide. If I go feet wide, I'm gonna be working all in here, okay? If I go feet turn out, I'm still going to be working all in here with a little bit more glute, okay? But if we're just focusing on quads, I'm going to keep my feet neutral and wide, and this will be more so inside, okay? Think teardrop, think adductor, okay? So I push up, I'm going here. From this motion, I'm going to make sure my feet are nice and neutral. I'm going to put my foot, I'm going to put my head, head scarf off, here we go, okay? So I'm going to put my feet here. When I go here, my core is tight. My back is staying against the pad. This is extremely, extremely important. When you come down out of this motion, if I'm coming down here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm bracing here. This is where my range of motion ends. My thighs are literally in touch with my legs. You do not need to come this low if it is not comfortable for you. But keep in mind, my butt is not rounding off the pad. I'm feeling all of this in my quads. My spine is still against the pad. From here, I'm gonna push up with my quads. Push, 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 push push, 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 get that going, okay? So that was all inside for me here and a little bit of glute, depending on your body type. All right, if I wanna come in for neutral stance, I'm gonna bring my feet in, in line with my hips. So if, if your hips are wider set, you will set your feet in line with your hip bones. Here, I'm gonna come down, okay? Coming down, coming down, coming down. The range of motion may be less because my rib cage now is maxed out in terms of how much depth I can get. So if I'm going wider, I can get more depth. If I'm going closer, I can get less depth. From here, I'm gonna push again. Same thing here. Same thing here. I'm gonna get down here, push, 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 push. And now for me, I feel this right at the top of my lateralis going into my femoris for me. So you can play around with the foot positions and see where you feel it the most, all right? So that's leg press for quads. Three different foot variations. You can even do turn out here. You can do push here. There's different things you could do, but you wanna make sure that it does not hurt your knees, okay? All right, so now we're gonna walk up the pad because now I wanna get into my hamstrings, all right? 
I'm gonna go here. Now be cautious of the type of shoes you wear on leg days. I would never wear these to train on leg days, okay? These are more like your walking shoes, your everyday just kind of comfy shoes. On leg days, I either do basketball shoes or very flat shoes. Some people do socks, some people do bare feet. Depends on what's comfortable for you. I do flat basketball shoes or Metcons. All right, from here, because if I have my Metcons on and I'm working hamstrings, I don't want my feet sliding off because I'm pushing through my heel. I don't want my feet moving as I'm going forward. So here, hamstrings, I'm going here, but note how the angle is. My heel is not in line with my knees. Everything is a little bit higher up because even if I want to get up here a little bit more, which is what I usually be, I'm going here. So that way I'm pushing into the hamstrings and I'm going to push up with my heels. Okay, now you can push up with your heels while keeping the toes engaged, up to you. I like to keep it here, boom, and up. Okay, now, same thing if I go here. I'm gonna get even deeper into my hamstrings. I'm gonna get a little bit more wide set. I'm gonna aim to get my knees to my shoulders, but they don't need to go there because again, your anatomy doesn't always work for what the goals are. When people say ass to grass and things like that, that has based on your anatomy and what you need. So if I'm here, I'm gonna push up, 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 here. If I turn out, I'm gonna go here, open those hips up, get that stretch. Again, booty against the pad, squeeze up, okay? So what you wanna watch, and then how I get out of that. All right, so be cautious with the weight too. Make sure you have a spot if you're pushing heavier weight. So for me, I'm gonna keep everything braced because I'm protecting myself at all times. Abs are tight. I'm bringing one foot in, boom, push that up, push this one up, feet go straight, and then I'm gonna lock out the machine, come down, one leg at a time. Don't pop up, scoot up, Crunch up, grab, then stand up so that you don't get lightheaded, especially if you're pushing, pushing in really, really heavy weight. All right, those are your leg press variations. You see we have a whole assortment of other different leg press things. So make that differentiation in terms of what you want to work when you're doing the leg press, whether that's close feet, high feet, whatever you're doing, just recognize what the body part is, and you can adjust accordingly if you're limited on machines. All right, moving on. So. When I'm building a leg routine, I like to structure it like so. So if I have three hamstring days, I'm going to do a curl, a stretch, and a general contraction, okay? So what that can look like, we'll get to that down the road, but what that can look like, I'll just verbalize it now. That can look like a standing leg curl, that can look like a seated leg curl, that can look like a lying leg curl, okay? We'll run through all those variations. That's for the curl variation. If I'm doing a stretchy variation, that means I'm doing something that stretches the muscle. Boom, either it's an RDL or something like that. If I'm doing a general contraction, that could be the glute ham developer, which I'll show you how to do um, in a little bit. That could be the glute ham developer or anything that's like not stretching or um, curling, but kind of just like you're squeezing it. You're just aiming for that squeeze. That could be like a sumo squat variation. That could be, yeah, basically your sumo squat variation or your leg press variation. That's going to be more like your just squeezy type of, mental activation more than anything. All right, but before we get there, we're gonna go with quads. Now again, these two variations I'm starting with, your leg press and your lunges can both be quad or hamstring. It just depends on what you're going for. Multiple lunge variations. All right, first you have your traditional walking lunge. All right, so if I'm going here, my hands are down my sides. I can put them in the side so that you're not using your arms. You're gonna really work on your balance. When I take that first step, I'm gonna lift my foot up and I'm gonna just step here first. Okay, so note the distance between my feet. When my foot connects is when I'm gonna bend, here. Okay, so quad variation, my ankle is stabilized, my knee is not fully over my toes, but it could be if you train that way. Generally, for my beginners especially, safe side of things, keep that knee behind those toes. This back knee will hover, okay? All that weight goes in here, and you're just gonna walk through. Now, don't do this unless you are just starting. I like to call it a little bit of a cheat, but again, if you're be just beginning and you're just trying to work yourself and get how to just do the movement, that's fine. But if you are been in the game for years and you know how to lunge, once you, because you will get to that point, once you get to that point, you need to be walking, lunging, literally as if you're walking. You're not gonna take one step and just kind of pause, like, oh, I need to get ready for the next step, okay? So if I'm doing my regular walk and lunges, I'm here, boom, I'm gonna walk, and walk when I come up one step at a time now in terms of how you consider your rep range again if you're building if you're doing more maintenance if you're doing more conditioning that all makes a difference okay so 
If you're focusing on that, again, you'll see your heart rate kind of increase as you're doing the walking lunges. Same thing here. So I'll say, all right. Oh, six. I get this question all the time. I've been doing the same amount of work. I've been doing the same workout for a while. Can I switch it up? You can. So just because your plan says lunges, that doesn't mean you have to do walking lunges the whole time or forward walking lunges the whole time. So for instance, I could do backwards lunges, which will also test you a lot. So I'm going here. I'm doing backwards lunges. Push back. Now that one, you will need to pause because you're going to hear, step back. What you're doing is that's going to be more glute and quad because you're going to have to push off of that back leg with momentum. So when you push back, it's push off. So what that looks like from the side is if I lunge backwards, I'm going here, dropping my knee, I'm pushing off of that left one, okay? That's your other lunge variation. That's a backward, more explosive lunge variation, okay? So that's already two options you got. So if you've been doing lunges for a year, switch it up a little bit and do something else. That's also quad. So we got two quad variation lunges so far. Third quad variation lunge. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna find something to plop our foot on. You can usually use like either it's a step or something like that. You're gonna take your back leg, put it up here. All right. Does not need to be this high. You can go a little bit lower like a calf, a little step. You can do a little smaller bench, generally like around here, just so that back leg is elevated, okay? So we're gonna go into a split lunge. When I do this, I'm gonna go down, 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 down. This front foot is where all your meat and potatoes should be. You're gonna feel the stretch to this side of that quad, okay? You do not push into this leg because that's when you start cheating, okay? You want all your weight forward. You can even lean forward a little bit more to get in that quad a little bit more, and then you push up, okay? You don't use this foot to push up. It's just to hold you so that you're forced to put all your weight in this front leg, okay? All right, so again, I'm doing quad-based split lunges. My knee is directly in line with my toes. I'm leaning forward, so I'm putting that pressure. When you build up to weight, start with no weight first. When you build up to weight, put that weight in this hand. Boom, go here. When you build up to more weight, put the weight in this hand, and you're just pushing up here, okay? And this is a good movement, too, to help work on your balance because you're forced to utilize that, that um, entire foot, really, to keep your balance in your abs and your core, in your pelvic floor. What I would do is, when you're doing a split lunge, though, it's really, really unilateral. Like you're not gonna just switch out and do that. You're gonna do one full leg, max it out. Do the other full leg, max it out. Now, when you're planning which leg do I go first, do your weaker leg first, okay? Because if that weaker leg, you gave it your all and you bottom out at 10, I don't want you doing 15 on the left leg, just do the same 10 you did on the right leg, okay? Keep that the same. So again, if you're doing a unilateral movement where you're doing all the reps on one side first, choose the weakest leg first, the weakest body pad first. Then you go from there. All right, that's another quad focus. Now, I'm going to show you how to do a hamstring variation of that split lunge. So I'm going to get in here. Boom. Same kind of general setup. The main difference is, again, like we learned on the leg press, the distance your heel is from your other foot and in, term, in your pelvis. Okay, so here, I'm going to have to kind of hop out a little bit. Boop, boop, boop. Boop. And then I'm going to sit back. Okay, so once I hop out, so my knee is not going to be here anymore because I'm not going to lean forward. I'm going to sit back here. This leg is just pressing, and I'm going to go back here, 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 get all the way in that, and feel that stretch, okay? So that knee is over my ankle more so than my toes. Then I'm going to come up, but when I come up, I'm not going to come forward. I'm going to stay back here, go straight down, push up here. Straight down, push up here, okay? That's how you're going to do a split lunge, more so hamstring focused, okay? Remember quad versus hamstring, pick one there. All right, that's kind of how you do hamstrings in that movement. You can do the same distance hamstring walking. So just kind of just take all the pieces and pieces, put them all together and make your plan that way. And moving on, since I'm in this area of machines, we're going to jump from quads real quick and we're going to go to say hamstring curl to kind of show you what that looks like. So here's like a standard hamstring curl. Mostly everybody has this type of equipment. Eh, type of machine, let me be clear about that. So, if you have a ham lying hamstring curl, okay, and when you pop in, there are a couple key things you want to focus on. So, of course, you want to focus on the setup of the machine. Just making sure it's resting properly for you in the back and behind your knees because you don't want it pulling in a proper way. So, for me, when I get in here, I like the pad to be lower calf, kind of like above the ankle-ish at the top of the motion. So if it's not there, restructure the machine so that you're lining up for your body type so that you're not causing any injuries. All right, so when I get into a lying leg curl, I'm going to pop in here. Boom. 
I'm going to shimmy my way on up, get set, okay? So now here, if I'm all the way up here, I already know this isn't going to work for me. So I'm going to get back out, and then I'm going to figure out if the machine has, let me see. Ah, it has a spring. So this one's spring-loaded. So what that means is I'm going to have to slide down and then pop up. So for those in that house, this is how you're going to use this machine. So I'm not going to go all the way up front first. I'm going to stay lower on the pad. So what that looks like is this. So instead of making the machine work, I'm going to work myself into the machine. So now I just slid back. My hips are still supported. My hands are still on the handle. And I'm here. Now, key thing to note, my pelvis is still on the pad and my rib cage on the pad. There's another way to do this. If you don't want your rib cage on the pad and you want more hamstrings, sometimes I'll kind of come up. If the bench is flatter and this machine is a little bit different, I'll come up to this variation to where my I'm pushing my hips into the pad. All right, but now here, I want to keep everything in contact for this specific machine. I have my back of my ankles set onto the pad. From here, I'm going to brace, keep my abs tight, always keep your abs tight. I'm going to make sure I lock in. I'm not, my goal is to not necessarily squeeze my glutes. It's really to focus on what we're working, which is hamstrings, okay? Your glutes will come into the party, yes, but my goal is for hamstrings. So if I'm here, I'm rested here. I'm going to flex my feet for this variation. I got my feet flexed. All right, from here, I'm going to brace, grab the handle, curl up like so. I'm driving my heels to my butt. And I'm going to release. Now, when I release, I'm not going to go all the way down. I'm going to keep that tension on that muscle. And I'm going to come back up. And now, while I'm doing this, I'm going to sink my breathing. Though I'm talking, if I'm real life, I'm going to sink my breathing with every motion. Okay? Because breathing is very, very important. If you don't breathe properly, everything can go right. Okay. So, I do dorsiflex. You can do point if you so choose. Dorsiflex is kind of your general one. You can slightly turn out if you so choose. But again, when you start adding variations, that's when you start pulling on different tendons and ligaments. So you want to be cautious of what you're doing. So again, for my beginners, if you're starting out, stick with your basic foot placement so that way you get the basic set, your foundation set, and then you can build on and look for different pieces to play around with and kind of how you want to train. But again, you want to know how the machine works and how your body works as a machine. Okay, so since we're in the hamstring area, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the stretchy motion that I talked about. All right, so it's going to be more of an RDL. I don't prefer to do stiff leg movements unless it's zero weight. That's the only time I'll do it with like, so stiff leg is be more so like knees real straight. I don't do really knees straight on anything. So if I'm doing my RDLs, this is the, this is the machine I'm going to use for it today. Now, when it comes to RDLs, you can do banded RDLs, you can do dumbbell RDLs, you can do Smith Machine RDLs, you can do cable RDLs. All of these movements, I'm just teaching you how to move your body in the space of what you're trying to activate, okay? So, again, know what you're trying to do, set your plan, and just plug in the workout that you feel like doing for that day. So if I'm here, again, like we always talk about, starting from the bottom to the top, I got my feet set, I'm going about hip width. In this motion, I'm going to come down a little bit to grab the bottom handle, and I'm going to stand up first. Now, when I stand up, I'm using my glutes to stand up. I'm not just kind of picking up my back. I'm going to use my glutes to stand up. From this, I'm going to work my way back because I'm a little bit too far forward for me. When I hinge, I'm going to hinge from the hips. So for RDLs, and glutes really come into the play with this too, I'm going to push my butt back first, abs in tight, and I'm going to hinge from the hip, 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 get that stretch from here. I'm going to squeeze my glutes in and pull up, okay? Release the glutes, stretch down, and squeeze up. The whole time my abs should be tight. I'm moving in one plane, my spine is straight, 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 get that stretch of the hamstring, squeeze the glutes, push up. And the whole time I'm pushing my feet into the ground. So stay grounded, hinge, squeeze glutes and hamstrings, pull up. Now, when I'm getting out of this machine, I'm going to set my feet again. I'm going to bend to a squat and protect my back and let it go. All right, that's how you get in and out of a machine like this. Now, if you were doing dumbbells, it'll be like so. Come on over. So if we're doing dumbbells, we're going to grab our dumbbell, same form, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. All right. So if I got this going here, I got my dumbbells here. Again, neutral feet, 
there are variations where you can do this variation a little bit wider, turn out again. We're starting with our basics. So we're going to do hip width. We're going to take the dumbbells. We're going to place them on top of our quads. When you think of your RDL, I want you to think of, again, same thing, push your glutes back, abs tight. I want you to think of dragging the dumbbells down the quads and squeeze them back up straight through. Now, I like to keep my spine straight, so I do tend to keep my head down. Now, people ask, how deep do you need to go? I go for where I feel that stretch in my hamstrings. So for my more flexible people, that may mean you need to go deeper. For my less flexible people, that means you could be up a little bit higher. But the key thing is feeling that stretch for your physique. Y'all don't hear me say this all the time. Your physique. Train for your body. So what that looks like again, from the side, I'm here. Feet are set. I'm up tall, abs are tight. I'm gonna hinge, 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 hinge. Keep my eyes down towards the ground. And I'm gonna squeeze back up. Breathe it out. Push down, 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 down. Squeeze back up. Like that, okay? When I get done, I'm gonna release my glutes. Put these back to my side. Turn and put the weight back down. Okay, again, you can add one of those long bands where you thrust at the top. You can do a version where you don't thrust at the top and squeeze the glutes at the top. There's different ways you can activate, but for me, because I have lordosis and scoliosis, for my lordosis, I have to activate my glutes anytime I hinge forward. Anytime I hinge where I'm picking anything up, my glutes must activate. So double check with your body type, see what you need to do. If you are uncomfortable pulling those glutes in and thrusting at the top. So for me, when I pull my glutes in and thrust at the top, I'm not really thrusting. I, it just looks like I am. So a lot of times if you see a video posted and it looks like I'm thrusting, I'm not going here because that's a thrust for me. I'm just pulling straight to the center line of where my spine is because my spine is already curved. So keep that in mind when you're seeing certain clips. So again, you don't need to come down and thrust here. You don't need to do that, okay? You can easily go down, come up into your center line, and release. So for me, I feel all that in my low uh, glute and hamstring and not my low back. So you want to focus on that too, no matter what weight you're lifting. Of course, if you're lifting heavier weight without back support especially, you're going to feel a little bit more in those spinal erectors, but the goal is to feel it more in the hamstrings and the glutes. So keep that in mind when you're doing your dumbbell RDLs. Okay? Moving on. We've gone over lunges. We've gone over leg press. We've gone over RDLs. We've gone over how you would do a stiff leg if you wanted to do a stiff leg. Um, we're now going to go into our squats. Now, I do not barbell squat at any point in time, and I have not um, since after college. I uh, did a little bit like in 2019. That's probably the last time I put a barbell on my back for pretty much anything, okay? So that does not mean don't do it. If you want to do it, cool. I'm just not going to demonstrate it because I don't do that type of squat work anymore. So I will show you. What we're going to do is a machine squat. So you can still squat. Definitely believe in squatting, but it's, again, how you do it. Because keep in mind, if you're squatting a bunch of weight, you're deadlifting a bunch of weight, all of that goes to your waistline. So if you're trying to keep your waist small and kind of get everything popping around it, you got to work around those less functional movements, but still functional movements to find that happy medium so that you're able to better your physique for bodybuilding in particular. But for my people who are just kind of just watching this to get fit, scratch all that nonsense. If you want a barbell squat, you do it, but it does kind of, um, it's a lot on the body. It's a lot, I will say. So you can still do it, but I'm gonna show you a machine version. All right? Okay, most gyms, most LA Fitnesses have a machine like this as your V-squat. All right, so if I'm here, same concept, if I want more glute ham, I'm gonna get my feet all the way out here so I can get in the pocket and go from there. If I want more quad, I'm gonna come down to a more neutral stance, okay? So first things first, I'm setting my feet as always. Set my feet up. I'm getting my back braced, my abs tight. I'm gonna push up on the machine. Now, when you push up, do not lock your knees. On your leg press, do not lock your knees. Do not lock your knees at any point in time just for the safety of your joints, okay? Don't lock your knees. So I got my knees soft. So it may look straight. They're not. They're not locked, though. They're straight. They're, like, if I locked them, I don't even know how to do it. So I'm going here. That's just straight. I'm going to take my handle, I'm going to push down. Okay, so depending on kind of how you want to do your squat, I'm going to go a little bit wider today. I'm going to grab the handles. Generally, I don't grab the handles because what most people do when they grab the handles is they pull down. So you're adding more strain to you. So I'll kind of just rest my hands here, get set, get my feet ready, hips set, nice and warm. And I'm going to come down in the pocket, watch my knees, keep my back against the pad, abs tight. I bottomed out, and I'm going to push back up. When I push back up, the goal is to use your quads not anything else so I'm going down 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 
knees are where they are, I'm pushing back up, using my legs. If I want more hamstring, I can go out a little bit wider, get a little bit higher up, because it's gonna force me to use my hamstring because my feet are further away from me. So I'm going here, again, my knees are lying my ankles, that's more hammy glute than it is quad. So that's how you make that switch for your V squat machine squats and your squats in general. So I'm gonna come up first, boom, boom, safely, lock the machine out, come down, make sure the machine is locked first, it's locked, okay, now I can release, and then I'm gonna come down out of it. So safety-wise, do not add weight, especially to a new machine, until you know how to use a machine. If you do not know how to use a machine, work through it without any weight, work through it with somebody with you if possible, and then move from there. But do not try to get on there and do whatever you wanna do and try to figure it out yourself if you are not in the gym or well-versed in the gym, all right? Okay, moving on. So last exercise we are gonna work through. Again, you can put any of these in any order that you so choose. I'm just gonna show you how to do them and you figure out which order you wanna do. So you can start with walking to the leg extension machine. You can start leg extensions. You can start with leg extensions and you can use them as a finisher. Okay, so we're gonna walk through them. It's pretty much cut and dry. Again, when the machine is a little bit more advanced like this, you're gonna have to play around with where you want this placed or when you want the back of the seat placed. So when you get into the machine and you're kind of trying to like, oh, where should this be? Am I doing this right? Your pad should be on the, in your shins. Look right above your ankle. When I slide back, I want to be able to rest comfortably against the pad, all right? I'm going to just grab here because the handles are back here. That's not comfortable for me. I'm going to grab here. When I push, I'm going to, same thing concept as your lateral raises we talked about. I'm going to push my shins into the pad and squeeze at the top, okay? You can flex your feet. You can point your feet. Depends on you. And I'm going to let it ram on down. Then I'm going to push up, squeeze at the top. Now, I'm not locking my knees. I'm getting that flex from my quads. I'm going to the range of motion that allows me to get that stretch at the bottom and then push back up and get that contraction at the top without hurting my knees, okay? You can go here with the feet. You can even move your feet in. For those who have a bit of thigh meat, and thigh meat is your activist for those who don't know, it's basically blocking. Hashtag no thigh gap. So, if you got that going on, you kind of kind of go here, and it's where your thighs touch. Now, I tend to, if I'm doing a closer version, I'm going to let my toes touch to kind of really pull in here. Now, if I'm doing this for me, I feel this more in my lateral, my lateralis, okay? So I'm going here. But the goal is to keep those thighs as tight together as possible for this variation, okay? And it's just something fun to switch up with and kind of activate differently. You can also go wider if you choose to. It just depends on what you got going on. So again, no foot placement is wrong. It just depends on where you feel it at and what you want to do with that machine and that movement. With that being said, these are your key movements, your staple movements for a leg day. Have fun with these and kind of just place them where you want and have fun on the journey of just learning what you want to do for your body and your goals. So key thing is in, remember the form. Once you learn the form, you'll learn how to manipulate the machines. Once you've been in the gym for a longer period of time, you'll learn how to what, like, what makes sense? Like, on this machine, how should my body be moving? So you'll learn that the more you're in the gym. All right, y'all.